Hey, what's up guys? Chip Walters here and today I want to talk a little bit about how you use EV to render large scale architectural models. So there is a thread over on Blender Artist where a sketch style customer is asking about how they can get the best ambient occlusion shading for large scale block models much like this one here. And as you can see, he points out that Rhino does a great job Whereas in the case of Eevee, he just can't seem to get it to work. So I asked him to upload the file and let's see what we can do with it. So first I'm going to start from a complete default scene. So I'm going to go file, defaults, load factory settings, and then I'll hit A to select all, X to delete everything. That's where we're going to start. Next, I'm going to append the collection which he uploaded to me. So let's do that real quick. Append. Here's the file he uploaded, hidden line. We'll go to the collection, grab this collection, and say append from library. So now we have this collection inside this collection. Let's go ahead and just move it to the top one. Let's take this previous one and delete it. So we have one collection. Now you notice here is our world origin and we don't see anything. So let's first, let's delete the sun. We don't need that right now. And I'll grab any object over here and then I'll go over here, hit the period on the numpad and there's our object. And you can see it's got some clipping problems. I'm gonna go over here and right click on this and say, select objects. And once they are all selected, I will shift click and click on this bottom plane and I will say object parent, parent object. Now if this object selected, as you can see, it's Everything is parented. And now we will say object set origin to geometry. So now that it's set, I'll say object snap selection to cursor. Cursor's at zero, zero. I hit the P key again, see our object. So we still have some clipping problems. So let's, let's kind of fix the clipping problems now. So we'll go over here and in our view, we will just set the end to something like 3000. And now our clipping problems are solved. Now, the other thing that we have is that we have all of these origins of all of these objects are set all the way out there. So what I'll do now is I'm going to come over again and I'm going to right click on collection and I'm going to say select objects. This selects everything in the collection and I'm going to hold the shift key down and deselect our main object. Now that I've deselected this main object, let's just shift select any one of these. So now that's selected, I can say object set origin to 3D cursor. But this time I'm gonna hold the alt key down and that's gonna set all of the origins, not just this one, but every single one of these is set. So now we have our model pretty much set up the way we want. Okay, so next let's go ahead and set up the material. So I'll select any object here and I'll go into my shader editor and I've got something set here, but I don't really want it. Came in with the object. And I will shift A and I want to add a shader. That's a diffuse shader. Let's take that in here and we'll hook that up to the surface. Then I will search for an ambient occlusion node and I'll drag the color there to there. Now, what am I doing? Well, this is going to accentuate the ambient occlusion in this particular scene. I'll show you later on when I turn it off. Great. Now we have our material setup for the entire scene. So next we're going to go ahead and start setting up our lighting and I want to get our shadows exactly right. So the scene that we're going to look at is from this angle here. And so I'll shift A and I'll insert a sunlight. I'm going to G move it up on the Z axis and you can see it's pointing straight down. So we're going to go over here and look at the EV scene render and I'm going to rotate this light. I'll tap R twice and I can move, move it around. As you can see, it's moving around, but I have absolutely no shadows whatsoever. So what's going on? Well, there's a couple things that we have to understand. First, let's go into Eevee and let's make sure that our shadows are set to high bit depth. And we also want to make sure that we're at VSM. And I'm going to max these out because this is a very simple scene. Cascade size is going to give me a sharp, sharp shadow. So once that's done, we can still see that we have nothing going on. So now I'm going to go back into our, our sun object. We're going to give it a setting of two, give it a little bit of a brighter setting. And now let's look at the shadow. The clip start is 0.05. The clip end is only 40 meters. Let's change this to 1000. And it really didn't do much for us yet, but it will. I'm going to turn on contact shadows. And now I go down to cascade shadow map and I still have the same max distance. So I'm going to change this to 1000. Now when I do that, I'm starting to get the shadows. And let's go ahead again and click on our sun, RR, and let's make these shadows go long, something like this. And you'll see as we do this, these max distances come into play. If I have this at 500, you'll see it won't make it. If I do 1,000, it does. And, and notice over here, this is 1,000 from the camera. 
we're losing that shadow right there at that angle. So if I zoom out, notice I'm losing all of these shadows. So that's why this clip number is pretty important to get right. But if you go too high, then you're going to end up getting a lot coarser shadows. 2000 seems to be the right number. So I'm going to keep both of these at 2000. I will go in here and I'm going to turn off the softness to zero. Set my lighting up the way I think I, I want it to be something like this. So that's pretty good. So I've got the shadows right and I got the light right. Now what I don't have is I don't have my world environment right. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'll move this up and I will go into our world and you can see we have used nodes. So I want the background to be white. So let's go ahead and make that white. There it is. So now that it's white, we can see that goodness, it kind of blows everything out. So I'd like to be able to turn it down. If I turn it down, you notice that the whole scene gets a little bit darker, but the background does too. So I really want to keep the background white, but I just don't want to use the background color. So let's do this. Let's take this shift D and duplicate it. Then let's search for a mix shader and let's add that into here. And then let's search for a light path. And I'll put that over here. We want to take his camera ray and set that to be our factor. And then we want this one to be up top and that one to be down. Now what this does is, as you can see, I can change the lighting model, but I don't change the background. So that's what's nice about that. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to white. Okay, so we're still not getting anywhere, but before I forget, I wanna go back into my object and select something. And I wanna make sure that my diffuse is set. The roughness has gotta be set to one. Meaning I don't want any specular reflections or any highlights on this. With this being set, let's take a look at our EV settings again. In particular, we need to make sure we need to turn on ambient occlusion and for distance, I'm going to try 65 meters. Now let's keep in mind that this is a very large scene. If I just select one of these objects, you can see that that is 95, that's almost 100 meters. And this factor, if I put in like two, you'll see that it gets really dark fast. So I'm going to just 1.8 three or something like that for that. So we're starting to get a nicer look here. But what we don't have is we don't have a lot of differentiation between the sides of these objects and it gets dark really fast. So this might go into 1.2. We need a better lighting model other than just our sun. Our sun is not dark enough either. That's another thing that we will need to adjust. So if we go back into our world, I can certainly turn this down to 0.5. Uh, and that seems to do a lot better job. But again, we're not getting a lot of differentiation between the sides, but we are getting a lot better look for our model. Because remember that this is the lighting portion, and this right here is what just the background is. I'm gonna turn off our floor overlay so I can see it a little better. So what can we do? Make sure in preferences that we turn on Node Wrangler. And with this background selected, I'll hit Control T and hit the G button and I'll move that over. So now I have a environment texture I can add here. So what I'm gonna do next, hit this open button and I'll go to my HDRIs. And this is actually a free HDRI and I'm gonna use this one right here. These are free and you can get this on the web if you search for multi-area light.hdri or o3.hdri, you'll probably find these. I can't remember where I got them. I'll also include it in the file because I know that they were CC0 free. So I'm gonna open this up. And now you can start to see I'm getting quite nicer differentiation between these objects. I can now push this back up to one and I have a very nice model that's ready to render. So let's look at another couple things real quick. If you look over here in this mapping node for this HDRI, you can actually rotate it about the Z. And as you do that, you will be changing the lighting in the scene above. You can kind of see it's very subtle, but it's working. The other thing I want to show you is let's go back into our object mode. And let's select our default material here. And notice when I turn off this ambient occlusion, you'll see how much flatter the render is. And so that's a real critical component of this technique. I can also adjust the color of the ambient occlusion. If I'm trying to do a clay rendering or something like that, you can do that right here by adjusting the color. Okay, let's set up our scene for rendering. You notice we don't have a camera yet, so Shift A, let's just go ahead and add a camera. Camera is there. So now that I have a camera in my scene, I'll hold the Control, Alt, and Numpad 0, and that will set it for me. And if I scroll my mouse wheel in, I can get it a little bigger. Then I'll go into View, and I'll say Lock Camera to View, and now I'm gonna actually move it around. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to get the same problem we had earlier, it's the clipping problem. Select the camera, go in here, and I need to set this clip also to 3000. And now we have it. So now let's adjust our 
shadows and actually if you look our light could be a little brighter because we're starting to see just a little bit of this ground plane so i'm going to go in select the sun punch it to three and now you can see my shadows are darker we talked about doing that and then with the sun selected i'll type rr and i'll start to manipulate the shadows we'll notice that our viewport settings are at 16. i'm going to put them to 64. and we have pretty nice scene right here ready to be rendered but before we do that, one other thing we want to do is look at our ambient occlusion and let's just jack up this trace precision. You can see it actually gives us a little better of an AO effect. Notice that we have something strange going on here. Let's take a quick look at that. I'll tap the zero key to get out of it. And as you can see, as we look around, we'll start to see that, yeah, we have some, some steps going on over here and that's what's, that's what's causing that. But all of these objects, as you can see, are rendering correctly. So I'll go back to our render. I'm going to set this to 95% and I'll hit the F12 key. There is our render. See, it looks pretty darn good. Let's say we want to add some lines to this. That's fairly simple. We'll just go into our preferences. We'll turn on sketch scale. Come here and we we'll hit the sketch button and we want to turn off cycles. We'll use EV for that. And we're going to come up here and under world, instead of using the sketch style world, I'm going to use the one that we've already created for this render, which is that one right there. Let's just go ahead and render this with the defaults. And there is our render. So that worked pretty good just with the defaults. Notice that there's a little bit too much maybe of these edges crossing. I can come back here and just dial that down. I can even make it zero if I want and render it again. And there we have it. So there's one other setting we forgot to mention. And as we look, we can see that some of these shadows are a little bit blurry. And there are two ways we can make them more sharp. The first is actually if we go in, instead of using VSM, we use ESM. And ESM will make them a little more sharp, but they also might be a little jaggedy. So I don't prefer that one. I'm going to leave it at VSM. But the other way, which is actually pretty easy, is you go into the sun settings, scroll to the bottom, and this distribution make that zero. And when you make that zero, that sharpens those shadows up quite a bit. So that's another setting that you're going to want to pay attention to, the distribution setting under cascaded shadow maps for your sun. A quick note, if you save a scene, sketch style will default back to the sketch style scene. So you need to go ahead and turn it back to the world. And the reason for that is because we have all these settings over here for the world scenes. So keep that in mind. You could also just copy and paste these nodes into the sketch style scene and you should be pretty good as well. Although these buttons will no longer work. I hope this was a fun tutorial for you. I will post the scene in the Blender Artist form online under sketch style. And thanks for watching and I'll see you online.